Hi. Welcome to A Drop of Golden Sun. Have you been in before? Yes, a few months ago. I do recall that. Well, welcome back. You got the... those cookbooks, right? Yeah, okay. I recognize you. Well, welcome back. Um, so you're familiar with, um, our setup here. We are a coffee shop, as well as a bookshop, selling new and used books. Yeah. Um, so, can I get you a drink today? Yeah. Uh, we, so we, yeah, we have lattes. We have tea, so, yeah, we have the matcha latte, strawberry latte, lavender latte, uh, mocha. We also just have plain tea from our tea selection, uh, green tea, herbal, different fruit herbal teas, mint, um, and you can do any of our drinks, um, hot or cold, um, I assume hot because it's, what is it, like negative eight today? Crazy. Um, so, yeah, that that's kind of our drink selection. Uh, yeah, totally. We can do just plain coffee. Um, do you want any sweetener in that? Any milk? We have, um, oat and soy at the moment. Just black coffee. Classic, no problem. Um, and then would you like any sweet treats? Yeah, so we have like tea snacks. We have little like rice, rice tea snack things. Um, and then we have, uh, locally made, not in here, but, um, down the street at the, the bakery. Have you been there? Yeah. Yes, that one. Um, we have, uh, croissants and, um, cookies. So, the cookie of the week is, let me see, chocolate orange, yeah, yes, it is good, to me it kind of tastes like, like gingerbread a little bit, it's got that like soft sort of texture, you'd like to try it? Sure, how many? They're like this big, okay, two, it sounds good. Um, so yeah, black coffee, no milk, no sugar, and two orange chocolate cookies, is that right? Yes, it's all vegan. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, perfect. So I will go, um, prepare that, and I will be right back. Mm -hmm.
Okay, so here's this for you. Yep, that's your coffee, nice and hot. Um, and, um, and here's your cookies. Yeah. Yes, enjoy. Um, can I get you anything else? Oh, awesome. I'm so glad you liked my recommendations from last time. Did you get to all of them? Wow, you must read a lot. Oh, okay. Um, cool. I assume you didn't cook everything in the cookbooks. <laughs> You've been going out to eat a lot. Makes sense. Um, sometimes it's like cold and you're just tired and it's like, let me just go get a bagel, you know? So, anyways. Some recommendations, yeah. What are you looking for this time? Okay. Sure. You trust my judgment and... Okay, so really no preference at all? Okay, so some fiction, some nonfiction. Okay, perfect. Um, let me see what I can... Um whip up or go grab off the shelf and uh yeah and i'll be right back with that go ahead and enjoy your um your coffee and your uh cookies yeah yeah i'll, I'll, be, I'll be right back okay all right i am back with um one two three four five six six interesting books um to recommend to you um, so, let me just get started here. Where to start? Where to start? Let's start from the bottom. Okay. So this book. Have you heard of it? The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse. By Charlie Mackey. So he, um, illustrates illustrated and wrote this book. Now, this is a very, very beautiful book. Hardcover. Now, it's not so much a story as it is a visual poem, if that makes sense. So all of the text is hand um, written in this sort of calligraphy style with these um, beautiful drawings. Now, it's simply gorgeous. So it loosely follows a story. The boy um, meets his these friends along the way. And they share wisdom, I guess. So some of the pages are just like this, but uh, beautiful ink drawings and Okay, for example, this one is the, the boy and the mole, and the mole says, most of the old moles I know wish they had listened less to their fears and more to their dreams. So it's just very cute, very um, artsy. And um, I realize it's not really like anything I recommended last time. It's not a children's book. Um, I think it's good for like bedtime when you don't want to amp yourself up with a super engaging story. You don't want to, you know, like watch TV because the, the blue light or whatever. It's good to wind down, to relax, and really savor, you know, you don't, you can whip through it if you want, um, and then read it multiple times, or you can really, like, enjoy each page and the art, and there's lots of ways to enjoy it. So, anyways, uh, I was gifted this by a friend, so I recommend it to a lot of people. Um, it's a great gift, but it's also great for, like I said, your bedside table. Yeah, you can decide at the end. Um, honestly, I will just recommend it. Make a pile. You can think through it. You can look around the store some more. Um, so you don't feel pressured to, like, tell me which ones you liked and which ones sound terrible or whatever. Yeah. And then you can come back and check out later. Yeah. Okay. 
So on to the next one. This one is nonfiction. Now, don't be scared. It's called This is Vegan Propaganda and Other Lies the Meat Industry Tells You by Ed Winters. Okay, so a book called This is Vegan Propaganda seems a bit um, scary, uh, but it's sort of playing into the idea that any book that talks about, you know, animal agriculture or things like that, um, is labeled as propaganda, but it's really interesting. So Ed Winters um, has a YouTube channel um, called uh, Earthling Ed, which I recommend you check out. I'm a fan of it. So uh, truth be told, I actually have not read this book yet. Um, I'm recommending it because I watch, I'm a big fan of his YouTube channel. He does like little um, college campus debates. He makes informative videos and you know, reactions to different things um, in the vegan community, in the in terms of animal agriculture. So you don't have to be vegan to read this book, um, and you don't have to be not vegan to read this book. It's kind of just informative um, food for thought, so to speak. Um, but yeah, uh, I will set this aside. There's not really a summary. Quote on the inside, it says, Every time we eat, we have the power to radically transform the world we live in. Um, this is Ed, Ed Winters. Yeah. So, uh, and he's a very intelligent guy, great writing style, great orator. Um, he's been a, a guest lecturer at. Harvard and has spoken on the Socratic method and stuff. So anyways, I recommend it. And then if you read it, um, I'll be reading it soon. But if you read it, just let me know what you think. Yeah, so that is one of the nonfiction books I picked out for you. Moving on, this one is fiction. The Secret History by Donna Tartt. Donna Tart. Now, I don't know if it was last time. I don't remember if it was you. I recommend it to a lot of people. Is The Goldfinch. The Goldfinch by Donna Tart. And that's kind of the book she's most known for, I want to say. What says author of The Goldfinch. So I assume they're kind of using that to advertise this book. But this one, I would say, is even better than The Goldfinch. Under the influence of their charismatic classics professor, a group of clever, eccentric misfits at an elite New England college discover a way of thinking and living that's a world away from the humdrum existence of their contemporaries. But when they go beyond the boundaries of normal morality, they slip gradually from obsession to corruption to betrayal. And at last, inexorably, into evil. So, um, it's one of those books with I don't know what it's called, not anti-hero, maybe that's what it is. Basically, no one is a good person <laughs> in this book, but it's a really great, like, atmosphere, I want to say, taking place at a New England college, um, very, like, I don't know, you feel, you go through the seasons, um, in New England. Uh, I forget exactly where. Yeah, it's very engaging. It's gripping. <laughs> um, you know, m murder. Maybe that's saying too much. <laughs> Anyways, mystery. Um, maybe nostalgia. Just a very interesting read, and uh, Donna Tart is a fantastic writer. So. I would extremely, that's not the word, I would highly recommend this book. Um, yeah, it's it's a bit dense, so the pages are like that, um, you know, regular sized, and then, let's see, it's like 550 pages-ish, so yeah, anyways, I recommend this. 
set it in the pile, but uh, definitely think about that one. It's good. Uh, well, all of these are good because I'm recommending them. Or, <laughs> you know what I mean? Of course I think all of these are good. Sometimes like I'm in the car and I play my music um, with, with somebody, like I'll shuffle my playlist and I'm like, oh, I love this one. Every time a song comes on, oh, I love this one. Oh, this one's great. It's like, yeah, because it's your playlist. <laughs> Anyways, so that's what these books, it's like, of course, I like all of them. You might not like all of them, but yeah. Okay, this book, I recommend everyone read. It is highly engaging, funny, and just so well written. Um, it's, I don't know how to put it, magical realism. I guess, um, I was, uh, speaking to a customer and describing a book and they were like, oh, that's magical realism. So, uh, that's probably what this is, but kind of fantasy sci-fi takes place in modern times and it's nothing like any fantasy or anything like that you've ever read. I'm just going to read you the synopsis. Um, Carolyn knows she's a bit odd. She figures that's only natural when she spent her life locked away in an infinite library, forced to study at the feet of the man who might be God. She's seen her share of terrible things in those years, even died a few times herself. Steve tries hard to be an ordinary guy, and he's been doing a pretty good job at it, until Carolyn shows up in his life with a tempting offer, a pair of red rubber galoshes and exactly $327,000. Soon he finds himself swept up in a war waged on a scale he can barely comprehend as powerful forces battle for control of the library and the future of the universe itself. And I don't think I said, this book is called The Library at Mount Char by Scott Hawkins. What is interesting about this author is I believe this is the only thing he's written besides, um, computer programming manuals. So he works as a computer programmer and this is his first novel and he just knocked it out of the park, I must say. I could not put this down. I think I read it in like three sittings, to be honest. Um, it's not too long, so it's about 370 pages, approximately. Um, they're kind of like this, so not too dense, but a good a good amount of words. Um, yeah, and like I said, it's just super funny, but engaging. Some of it's very, I don't say graphic, it's not like gratuitous, but um, there's some violence. Um, just very intriguing world building, I want to say. So, um, and it, I'm more of a, a fan of contemporary writing, and I think this really fills that bucket for me. Um, it's got a modern, very modern style without being too, like, corny, if that makes sense at all. Um, so, yeah. The library at Mount Char, and the ending is just, like, amazing. It ties everything together so well. Like, up until, like, the last few pages, you're like, what? How are they gonna wrap this up? Very good, so. That's this one. Um, two more. This one is nonfiction. So, just take a look at this. It is beautiful. Um, with this sort of gold foil, similar to the first one I showed you. And it's called Why Fish Don't Exist by Lulu Miller of um, NPR. NPR reporter Lulu Miller. So, um, very beautiful book. It's got the, I think it has deckled edges, although it could just be for me, like, rubbing the sides. Um, it has illustration sprinkled throughout, like this. Um, a dark and astonishing tale of love, chaos, scientific obsession, and possibly even murder. Ooh. So it's sort of about, it's hard to say what this is about. It's Easiest to say it's nonfiction. Some might qu call it memoir, and some might call it biography. So it's sort of it. 
it centers around a scientist named David Starr Jordan, who was a taxonomist um, who greatly influenced um, taxonomy of, of fish and ocean creatures. Um, but he had a very interesting life with lots of ups and downs, a lot of uh, positive and negative contributions to the world that um, Ms. Miller uh, accounts in her in her research. Um, but it's not only that, she tells it in a way that is very narrative, so it doesn't feel biographical. Um, she adds a lot of detail and really puts herself in his shoes, empathizes, and in the beginning really idolizes him. But it also is about her journey in her life and in understanding him and she sets out to research him to kind of decide, like, to understand how he can help her understand her life and the universe. And it's funny, so it's called Why Fish Don't Exist, and that might seem kind of ridiculous, and actually by the end, you will realize that fish do not actually exist. Um, my friend and I read this as part of, like, a book club, and... Uh, now, every time fish come up, you know, one of us will be like, and that's why fish don't exist, and whoever else is there is very confused, even angry. We, like, said that in front of my, my brother, and he was like, what do you mean fish don't exist? Is this some sort of spirituality thing, or, I don't know, but it's kind of interesting. You can join the fish not existing club after you read this, so. Highly interesting, even if you're more of a fiction fan than non-fiction. Um, it's very, um, uh, engaging. So, Why Fish Don't Exist by Lulu Miller. I think I even cried, to be honest, towards the end. Maybe I didn't, I don't know. I cry a lot, so, in a good way. <laughs> Sorry, I'm kind of, like, rambling. <laughs> Are any of these sounding interesting to you? That's fair. That's fair. Most of them. These, yeah. Yeah, these two. Yeah, that, that, that checks out. And I mean, these will hopefully still be here by the next time you come in. So, um, and you can always check it out from your local library. Um, so, yeah. And then I did have one more to show you. Okay, cool. So, Last time, I do recall, I recommended to you a book by Lisa C. called The Island of Sea Women. Did you read that? And how did you, what did you think? Yeah, I, I cried to that one too. Yeah, like I said, I cry a lot, but it's, it's emotional. Especially because it's based on, well, it's not based on a true story, but it's based in historical events that were quite, um, tragic, to be honest. Um, but anyways, this book is also by Lisa C. It's called China Dolls. Um, so it's about three young um, Asian women in... Um, it starts in 1938 in San Francisco. They're all interested in show business and performing. Um, and it like Lisa C's other work, it uh, exists in sort of this intersectional space. That sounds so pretentious, but like what I mean is like, you know, they're Asian women in the early 20th century. So there's obviously going to be, and like right before World War II, which it does go into. So there's so many things that like they deal with, but it's about more about their friendship than it is about those things, which I see in a lot of Lisa C's book. Have you read, uh, sorry, Lisa C's books. Have you read, um, Snowflower and the Secret Fan? I recommend that one as well. Um, that's, yeah, it says author of Snowflower and the Secret Fan. I don't know if it's her first book, but it's one of her most popular books, and it's kind of that same thing, like, Asian women who become friends until one betrays the other and then this and that like very similar storyline, but I just love her writing uh, 
and just the things she writes about and the way she writes about it. So, um, I will say this is my least favorite of hers I've read so far, but that's of the favorites. You know what I mean? Like it's still really good. Uh, she tells it from three perspectives. So the three friends, it's told, you know, from it switches between their first person perspective. So it's interesting. I usually don't like that in writing, which is maybe why it's my least favorite, but I think she does a good job of it. So, um, yeah. So that's the last one. And actually, <laughs> if you can see, there's a bookmark in it. So I'm actually, I have like a chapter or two left. So maybe if the ending's terrible, I take back my recommendation, but I don't think so. So yeah. So those are the books that I have to recommend this time. Feel free to browse the store. Uh, we have lots of new things. So on that shelf over there is where we have the staff picks. Um, over there is when we have where we have the new, uh, new new books, and then uh, the rest of the store obviously is sorted uh, with you know signs as you've seen. So uh, feel free to take a look around, and uh, yeah, and I can hold these up here if you want. Yeah, no worries, and then you come to check out, uh, I'll just, you can check out whichever of these you want to. Yeah. Awesome. You finished your coffee. <laughs> That's good. Hopefully you won't be, like, bouncing off the walls tonight. <laughs> you can handle caffeine. Oh my gosh, really? That's crazy. I can have, like, one cup of green tea, and if I have it past, like, 10 a.m., I'm, like, you know, I'm like buzzed the rest of the night, so. Anyways, feel free to brow browse, enjoy the cozy atmosphere, enjoy the warmth. Um, and you know, yeah, stay warm. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll be right here.